India's population, 1.412 billion. Nawaz, what have you got, Nawaz? Ashwin goes over, clears the infield. India win a famous win. You look at all the great wins over the years. data compiled by the Horoon Research Institute, India is now the third top country to be hosting unicorns. India has a total of 54 unicorns. It has displaced the United Kingdom for the third spot. If you look at the last few years uh, when the effects of the pandemic, what you've seen is a two-leg recovery. You're seeing on the consumer side, the middle class, the upper middle class that actually saved a lot of money. Uh, most people did not lose jobs. Maybe they didn't get a big salary increase, but they didn't lose jobs. And we are seeing increasing spends. So if you actually see televisions, refrigerators, mobile phones, the more expensive ones are selling more. India must leverage its current position. Every major economy is slowing down, so India must offer itself as the alternative for investments, for manufacturing and for services. One example is the recent decision by Apple. The company has decided to manufacture their latest iPhone in India, the iPhone 14. Now, in a few minutes from now, the Indian Space Research Organization will be launching its smallest commercial rocket satellite launch vehicle. The vehicle will also leave the Earth's surface to put two satellites into its orbit, marking India's presence in the small satellite launch market. More than 12,000 people have been fired from Indian startups in 2022. 22. That's 12,000 jobs in less than six months. Indian startups are now staring at a long and gloomy winter. Rakesh Jhunjhunwala, a veteran investor who was known as the big bull of the Lal Street, is no more. He's died at the age of 62. India's External Affairs Minister S. Jay Shankar met with his Chinese counterpart Wang Yi in New York on Thursday at the BRICS ministerial meeting. The two leaders came face to face for the foreign minister's meet, which was hosted by South Africa. And the meeting was also attended by the Russian foreign minister, Sergei Lavrov. And in the BRICS meeting, the ministers exchanged their views on major global and regional issues and also on the intra-BRICS activities. But there was one nation that summed up the world's demand rather succinctly. It was India. The Narendra Modi-led nation sat across the table and told Russian President Vladimir Putin in as many words that today's era is not of war. Ще одне. Сьогодні говорив з прем'єр-міністром Індії. В наступному році саме Індія головуватиме у великій двадцятці. Побажав пану Моді плідного головування, причому плідного не для когось окремо, а для усіх у світі, хто цінує мир. Індія може бути більш активною в зусиллях для завершення агресії, тож сподіваюся, що в наступному році зможемо разом зробити більше для глобальної стабільності. We will be the largest country in the world in terms of population. We have started to grow. We have started to have a market size. <clears throat> you know what I call the Indonesia of India. If you take 50 million Europeans, 400 million Indonesians at $10,000. That in itself is very attractive for the world. world. And then we have, yes, oil prices going up. But if there is going to be a recession, the oil prices will moderate. Interest rates, you know, we will have a little bit of a tough time with that. But if you look at the MSCI index, it has taken us from 7 to 14.5 percent and China has been brought down from 36 to 29 percent. This means serious amounts of dollars are going to be coming towards India. We Indians can now buy stuff with a digital route. I want to turn to India because in the central state of Madhya Pradesh, scientists have unearthed some of Asia's oldest dinosaur fossils. The discoveries range from fossilized sharks and trees to the eggs of extinct species. And now experts are pushing to have the area recognized by UNESCO. India chalked up 8.7% growth in the year to May, and the IMF predicts it will keep growing faster than any major economy this year. When you have two growing economies racing through stages of development, both fueled by the same industry, there's going to be ruthless competition, and only one can win. Could it be India?